Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Ask Coach Marie. I'm Marie O'Neill, founder of Padma Life Coach and your host on this series. This is a place where you ask a question and I give my unique opinion as a life renewal coach, astrologer, and past life regression facilitator. Each week on Friday, a new video is released with me answering two questions from you, the viewer. I also talk about various other life renewal topics. Please know that I am not a therapist and I will never tell you what you must do. Let's go ahead and get started with the questions for this week. Our first question comes from Alex, who is in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Alex writes, I am a huge worrier and I worry constantly about everything. I also worry about the fact that I worry. It is causing me concern that I haven't been able to stop. Do you have any suggestions on how I can change this behavior? Yes, I do have some suggestions for you and thank you for asking that question. It's a very good question and a lot of people do have this issue of worrying. I myself sometimes do worry and I have a system in place that I use to actually help me stop worrying. It's a trait that a particular astrological sign has and we have to, of course, be careful because worrying never resolves any issue. And for you, I would say the same. Worrying isn't going to resolve whatever issue it is or whatever it is you're actually worrying about. And this is probably something you already know. Now, when we are worrying, it's usually because we don't know what the outcome will be. And that also is a symptom of wanting control, wanting to know what the outcome is going to be of any given situation, which a lot of times we just can't know. What you want to do is get to the root cause of why you're worrying. And I would assume it is because you want to know the outcome and you're worrying about what the outcome is for given situations that you find yourself in. Now, what you can do to help yourself with the worrying, and at least this is what I do, I enlist the help of friends, of course. If they know that I'm going to be worried about something, they will uh, support me to keep me from worrying. And this is something that you can do too, enlist the help of friends to help you so that you don't worry as much. One of the other tools that I find is you need to recognize when you start worrying. And when you recognize it, have some system in place that you can use to stop the worrying. One of the things that I like to do is use a stop sign in my mind's eye. When I find myself worrying, I just do hit the stop sign and I stop and move on to something else. If you find yourself or when you find yourself worrying and you hit the stop sign or you tell yourself to stop, you have to have something to replace that thought with. So that means that you need to predetermine what you're going to replace that thought with another something else that is more positive. It can be an affirmation that you use. The affirmations work really well for in this particular situation. You also want to make sure that you practice self-care, uh, making sure that you get enough sleep, that you're getting exercise, that you're doing everything that you can to have yourself be in a well-balanced state. As you know, once again, worrying can actually cause you health problems and you don't want that. So you do want to find ways to work with the worrying so that you can worry less. Meditation, as I said, it also helps a lot. If you can sit quietly for even 60 seconds without worrying, that will help you. And also 
I like to have a strong foundation, which means I have something that I believe in that is bigger than me. And when you have something that you believe in that is bigger than you, you can give that worry or that situation over to that being and take it off your plate. That's a good way to reduce the worrying. One other thing that you can do is write down what you're worried about and release it to the divine, to whomever you pray to. I hope that that helps you with the with worrying because it's something that a lot of people have an issue with and some people more than others. And it sounds like you're one of those people who really have an issue with it. So practice the steps that I've given you and let me know how it works for you. All right, we are going to move on to the topic for today. And the topic is how manifesting actually works. The reason that I want to talk about this today is because I've been hearing a lot of people talking about manifesting your goals or your dreams and you don't really need to do anything except think the thought and it'll happen. And that is just not the case, or at least it hasn't been my case with anybody that I've worked with. With manifesting, yes, it's fine to use affirmations. It's fine to use mantras. That is all wonderful to do. What you need to know, though, is that what you're manifesting is based on what's going on within you. It's that thought process that is running under the surface. It's not necessarily what you're saying that you're going to manifest. One of the examples that I have for this is a couple of years ago, I was with a couple of friends in the car and I was driving down in Southern California. And I was telling one of my friends, I said, okay, I'm routing us away from LA because I really don't want to drive through LA. I was passionate about the fact that I didn't want to drive through LA. Not because I don't like LA, it's because of the traffic. I did not want to encounter the traffic. So what happened? I ended up in LA and I ended up on the freeway. My friend who was sitting in the car said, oh, look at that sign. Welcome to downtown LA. And we both just laughed out loud because I know I had manifested LA even though I didn't want it. The reason I manifested LA is because I had such emotion around the fact that I didn't want to go through LA or drive there. Your internal function, what you're thinking internally, is what manifests always because that's where your emotion is. You want to say what it is you want, of course, versus what you don't want. That helps. But you also want to get to the bottom of what the underlying issue is or if there is an underlying issue for what it is you don't want. Because I tell you, nine times out of ten, that is what you're going to manifest. So you want to do some work on yourself. If you are not manifesting what it is you want, you need to go deeper within yourself to find out what the root cause is and work on that, work on healing that and transforming it. And Once you really know what the issue is, then you can formulate your affirmation based on what's going on inside you so that you can get what it is you want. Because we do all manifest. We're constantly manifesting. We are creators, and that's what we do. You want to, of course, create what you want and not what you don't want. So I hope that helps a little bit. So let's go ahead and get going with the next question for today. Our next question comes from Zaib, who is in Syracuse, New York. Zaib writes, a couple of friends have pointed out that I'm a workaholic. I do work a lot, 
but I didn't realize that I was overdoing it. I'm still not sure about it. What are the symptoms of being a workaholic and what can be done about it? Good, good question. There are several symptoms to being a workaholic. And one is, of course, working excessive hours. A lot of times with the work that we do today, we're already, we're already going to work more than a 40 hour work week. But what is realistic? Is it realistic to work 60 hours a week or 80 hours a week? Is it excessive? Do you find yourself the only person in the office at the end of the day? Do you find yourself working far longer than your peers who you work with? The This is uh, one of the symptoms that you would be a workaholic. Another thing is, are you allowing other parts of your life to fall away, such as you're not being able to see your friends, you're not able to take care of yourself, you're not able to have a well-balanced life. These are other symptoms that you could be a workaholic. You want to ask your friends why they believe that you are a workaholic. I mean, maybe you're not. Maybe you're just doing your best to get the work done and you don't have a lot of free time because of that. In either case, you want to make sure that you're living a well-balanced life. So you want to make sure that you're not working a lot of overtime for long periods of time. If you're working on a project, it's totally understandable that you may need to actually work an 80 hour week for a period of time, but that should not be for a long period of time because that's going to weigh on your well being. If you find that you are a workaholic, this is, of course, up to you to make this determination. Then you have to decide what it is you want to do about it. If anything, you can always have your friends come and get you from work at a particular time of, of the day or evening if you're there longer than you deem necessary. You can set a definite time when you're actually going to stop for the work day. There is no such thing as completing everything that you want to do in a day in a day. There's always going to be something that will be left over to tomorrow. The reason I say that is have a hard stop of when you're going to stop working for the day maybe at 6 p.m. or 7 p.m., whatever it is, set a timer and you stop. Don't continue to work. Don't say, oh my goodness, I'm going to work another half hour and then leave. No, have a hard stop, which means that you have to set boundaries for yourself, which is a big thing when it comes to working. Make sure that you do have boundaries and allocate time for your friends, for exercise, for eating well, for having some fun because if you work too much that's going to actually affect the quality of the work that you do you'll find yourself sometimes working longer hours but not really accomplishing a whole lot so i hope that helps you please let me know send me an email or put a comment down below all right, we have come to the end of this week's session. Please, if you have questions, send them to podmacoach at icloud.com. That's podmacoach at icloud.com. I will answer your questions on an upcoming video recording. And please like and subscribe to the YouTube station and click the little bell so that you are notified of upcoming videos. Thank you for listening to this video. I appreciate all of you out there and I appreciate your comments and your questions. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.